I am the leader of the youth, the speaker of the truth. Leader of the youth, speaker of the truth. Leader of the youth, and the speaker of the truth. Uh, I, I speak the truth and I lead the youth. I believe that I am the king of Zim Hip Hop. <laughs> I believe that I am the king of Zimbabwean music as a well. whole. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to introduce myself. I was born in a family of three. I have two sisters. I'm the second born. My dad's a doctor. My mom's a nurse. Brief about when you actually started rapping, how you got into the game, and, and so on. All right. Uh, I started taking interest when I, when I started listening to the music. Right. Um, I think that was around grade four, and I was just listening to the music that I like. And we were exposed to the hip-hop from outside there. I think those are the days where and Lil Wayne started popping. From the time he discovered his love for music at a very young age, Holy Ten never looked back. In high school, he became completely obsessed with hip-hop music. He started recording his own music and making beats with his friends. Yeah, I'm just kind of just on the beat I be teaching I be preaching I be sharing on the street despite all his passion for music his parents were not very supportive of him taking that career path and they wanted him to take the educational route at one point his father actually threatened to burn his speakers he was using to record his music upon completing high school he left Zimbabwe to study international law in Cyprus however this did not stop the aspiring musician from making music. He continued making music in Cyprus, and he actually grew an audience among the students on campus. Halfway through his degree, Holy Ten decided to quit, citing he did not want to do it anymore and felt way too smart for the education system. I then decided, yeah. I felt too smart. And he came back home to pursue his music career. When he came back, he focused fully on music, and he only had one option to make it big in the music industry and prove to his parents that he had made the right decision. Also when he returned, the Zimbabwean hip-hop scene was not as big as it is today, and most of the music he was putting out was not garnering as much attention as other artists in other popular genres like Zim Dancehall. His music received support from a few hip-hop fans who appreciated his authentic approach to hip-hop as he was a socially conscious rapper who articulated important societal issues in a very unique way. In July 2020, a popular movement, hashtag Zim Lives Matter, inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement, gained momentum and spread across Zimbabwe and gained international attention and support from influential people around the world. This is the very same time Holy Ten released his single Nda Remirwa, a social commentary song about the struggles of the youth in Zimbabwe, highlighting issues from poverty, youth unemployment, and drug abuse. The song quickly went viral as it resonated with many young people across Zimbabwe. After the huge success of Ndaremir, he would go on to prove wrong those who might have thought that he was a one-hit wonder as he followed up with the hits like Kumba Kunevanu, a song about the plight of the girl child. The rapper has said in multiple interviews that he is the advocate for the girl child and he has released other songs like Pandicha Muka, a song about gender-based violence. With his consistency and dropping hit after hit, it was clear that Holy Ten was here to stay, and he had solidified himself as one of the best hip-hop musicians in the country. Beyond just making hits, Holy Ten had a very distinct quality brought into the showbiz industry, and that was his ability to garner the public's attention. For the past three years, when compared to some of the biggest artists in the country, he averages higher as the most searched musician on Google in the country. He always finds a way to stay relevant and in people's minds, be it through his music, beef with other artists, saying controversial things in his interviews and relationship dramas, he never ceases to stay off the headlines. During his come up, Holy Ten has had beef with a lot of people in the music industry, the likes of Kiki Badass, T-Gons, Passion Java, a friendly beef with Enzo Aisha, and the most notable one with Volts JT. What seemed to have sparked the beef, according to Volts JT, was when Holy Ten copied Volts' style of rap. We were doing that show and trap sound before anyone else. Mm. And then back then, he was doing that uh, English rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Mm. And then 2019, he came in uh, mm. you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and this caused hostility between the two artists. As the two rappers were becoming bigger in the music scene, they decided to squash their beef and started working together and even collaborated on one of Voltz's songs, How Far. However, Holy Ten would resuscitate the beef again as he subtly took shots at Voltz in some of his songs like Pot 2, and they would go back and forth calling each other out. Some allegations have pointed out that what escalated the beef was when Holy Ten started dating Kimberly Richards, who is rumored to have been dating Volts before Holy Ten. Volts has been asked about the relationship with Kimberly, and he has given cryptic responses. It's wiser to deny it because we did not date. No, but then I'm thinking that I answer. It's wise, but in this year, must not answer. But what led people to this conclusion was this particular video of Vaults and Kimberly. The video went viral the same week that Holy Ten reportedly paid $15,000 bride price for Kimberly. The news of the $15,000 bride price became a trending topic, with a lot of people weighing in on the young rapper's decision of marrying the model. While some were happy for the couple's decision to get married, this rubbed off some people the wrong way, and this included Holy Ten's baby mama Chelsea Torero, who emerged claiming that Holy Ten had neglected her while she was pregnant, and he was not supporting her and the baby. As someone who branded himself as the supporter of the girl child, this was surprising and leads one to question if he really means what he claims to stand for. Chelsea continued with her tirade online, revealing that the hip-hop musician had blocked her, told her to communicate through his lawyer. The baby mama went on to make threats about revealing the conversation she had with Holy Ten about his late friend JD, who died in a car accident on their way to a show in Gweru. This led to many people on social media coming up with conspiracy theories, speculating that Holy Ten might have had a hand in his friend's death. With the matter escalating, Holy Ten visited Chelsea to resolve the conflict. DNA tests were reportedly done, and it was confirmed that he was indeed the father. As Holy Ten's music career was soaring higher and higher people began to discover his other side, the image of the young musician who promoted positive causes in society was slowly peeling off due to his antics he was presenting in public. A few months before the drama surrounding his marriage to Kimberly and the baby mama drama, Holy Ten was featured in Winky D's album, someone who he had openly stated that he looked up to. When the album was released, the song he was featured on E Bozo was a fan favorite with its hard-hitting social commentary on the corrupt elites in society. The collaboration on this particular song made sense as both artists are well known for singing about important issues going on in society. However, in the very same week of the song's release Holy Ten made a tweet stating how he regrets being part of the song because it had been politicized and he had not picked a side. Holy Ten went on to blast Winky D, and in an interview he did on the episode podcast he labeled you, Winky D a snake. A snake longer than his dreadlocks. I would have never done a song with Winky G. <laughs> this did not sit well with a lot of people who felt like these were attention-seeking antics, and some people even started unfollowing the musician on his social media platforms. In an Instagram video that he did addressing the Winky D issue, he stated that some people who finance his music were not happy with him being part of the Ibozo song. It's going to be the same. So, I, I have a lot of people who come by one day to the team. Like I was saying, Tim Kunz got an album, but he didn't have a lot of people. He didn't have a support publicly. Let me give Even after all this saga and the hate he received, his music continued to do well. His album The Book of Malachi did very well, and also his joint album with Michael Max, Bundu Boys, was well received. In August 2023, Holy Ten pulled yet another controversial move, as he openly endorsed the ruling party, Sanu PF, and he was part of the president's campaign team. Holy Ten's open support for Zanu PF was met with heavy criticism, Taking into consideration that most of his fans are people who live in the major cities and are huge supporters of the opposition party as reflected in the elections. The rapper was also cancelled by an American-based promoter Larry Kay for supporting ZANU PF. Even after all the hate and criticism he might receive, one thing that Holy Ten has proven is that he cannot be cancelled.
After his controversial ZANU PF endorsement, he released a single titled Delilah, which became a hit and topped the charts on the local radio stations. He still has fans going crazy when he performs across the country. They might not like his personal decisions, but surely cannot resist his talent. According to the Newsday, Holy 10 was gifted a brand new Range Rover for the work he did during the election campaign. He is still one of the most booked artists in the country. In November, he tied the knot with his wife Kimberly. He is certainly having the best time of his life. Holy 10 has had one hell of a career in a very short space of time and has had an undeniable impact in Zimbabwe's music industry. Even the artists that he has put on the spotlight, like Saint Flo, are doing very well. As to whether he changed or not, or he truly stands with what he claims to stand for, I'll let you be the judge.